Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my new Star Wars Mandalorian video and breakdown of the new Ahsoka Tano teaser trailer that they released this weekend when they explain what's going on with her spinoff series. So I'll also talk about what's happening with Anakin Skywalker now because Hayden Christensen is coming back because there have been so many questions about the other projects he might show up in. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Obviously, we have the Mandalorian Season 2 finale coming up this week, but I'll be doing Mandalorian Season 3 videos really soon, and there's a couple other Star Wars series that we'll be seeing during 2021. Careful for spoilers for everything that's happened on The Mandalorian so far if you haven't seen any of the episodes yet. Starting with number 10. This past week, you probably saw they announced 10 total new Star Wars series that they're releasing in the next few years. So that means eventually we're going to be getting three to four new Star Wars series every year, but that probably won't be till about 2022 before they ramp up to that volume. Only two of those series, though, are going to be direct spinoffs of The Mandalorian and will happen during the same time period where we are right now after the end of season two. The Ahsoka Tano series with Rosario Dawson and then the Rangers of the New Republic series about the X-Wing pilots patrolling the Outer Rim, like Carson Teva that we've seen the last couple of episodes, Trapper Wolf, Dave Filoni's character, the other X-Wing pilots. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video because this is more about Ahsoka Tano and what she's going to be doing during her series and what's going on with Hayden Christensen coming back to Star Wars as Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader because some of the scenes he's going to be filming for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series we learned will be flashbacks so a lot of you have now asked if he's going to also appear with Ahsoka Tano in some way. There's a much larger design behind all these plans. You may have also heard during the Disney Investor Panel that the Mandalorian spinoffs will all culminate in a big event crossover involving Grand Admiral Thrawn and probably Moff Gideon. So I'll explain how that's going to work during the video too. So they're going to have their own version of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Sort of like the Avengers series set in a Mandalorian cinematic universe in this part of the timeline. If you didn't see it, they had a really short teaser that they showed off with some concept footage. The really big Easter egg with her logo here, as a lot of you have spotted, is that this circle that's actually rotating around and shifting is actually a Jedi meditation circle. They show up during Jedi Fallen Order. In the game, they use those for game saves. But a lot of the symbols in the writing around the edges here is just the ancient Jedi language. You actually see it in the ancient Jedi texts during the Star Wars movies. The reason why it also kind of looks like a star chart for the galaxy itself is because it's actually designed to look like the world between worlds. It's sort of this extra dimensional space within the force that connects all times and places. You can use it to time travel to anywhere in the galaxy that you want. And Ezra Bridger used it to save Ahsoka's life and pluck her into a different time period. But number nine, we finally got live action Ahsoka Tano during The Mandalorian season two, episode five. Rosario Dawson was fantastic as the character, especially given everyone who's been watching Ahsoka for the past 10 to 12 years only knows her as Ashley Eckstein's version of the character. Yes, it's totally possible that we could see Ashley Eckstein cameo as some other character or be involved in some way during the Star Wars Ahsoka series. It makes sense if she cameoed as a character, it would be during that series. Both Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau, showrunners of The Mandalorian, are also executive producing the Ahsoka series and that other New Republic series. After the episode, Dave Filoni also came out and clarified Ahsoka's timeline between Star Wars Rebels, the new series, and what's going to be happening with her spinoff series. So number eight, they've pretty much given away what the story of her series is going to be between the Ahsoka ending scene from episode five of The Mandalorian, the Disney investor panel the past few weeks, the stuff that Rosario Dawson's been talking about, all the other Star Wars characters about the future of Ahsoka in the Star Wars universe. When you sort of pull from all of these other sources, you have a pretty good idea of what's going to be happening. At the end of episode five, she defeats Morgan Elsbeth, who herself is from Dathomir, actually, so she's probably one of the Night Sisters. So hopefully, we'll see some Night Sisters popping up in the live action shows soon. We learn she was one of Grand Admiral Thrawn's lackeys, and Ahsoka defeats her, demanding that she tell her where he is, implying that she's still trying to track Thrawn down after the end of Star Wars Rebels. So, in a very broad sense, the Ahsoka series will basically be the story of Ahsoka versus Thrawn. It's way bigger than that, involving a bunch of Mandalorian crossover and crossover with the other spinoff series, The Rangers of the New Republic. But Dave Filoni said something really interesting a few weeks ago that clarified the timeline and how this is all going to work. So the last time that we saw Ahsoka, before she showed up on The Mandalorian live action as Rosario Dawson, previously everyone had assumed that this last scene of Ahsoka Tano and Sabine Wren during the Star Wars Rebel finale end credit scene was happening right before she shows up on the Mandalorian series. 
there's a big time jump that happens during that final episode. They have their final battle with Grand Admiral Thrawn as Rebridger sacrifices himself using the Space Whale's ability to navigate hyperspace naturally using the Force. He takes Thrawn, the Chimera, his whole fleet of Star Destroyers, deep into the unknown regions where they can't hurt the Rebels, and that was about a year or two before the events of A New Hope. Then there's a big time jump and they show the celebrations of all the different worlds they're having after the second Death Star is destroyed in Return of the Jedi. They kind of did the same thing on the Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 1 with everybody in the bar on Tatooine getting wasted watching the second Death Star blow up on the holonet. Then we see a much older version of Sabine Wren meeting a much older version of Ahsoka Tano talking about going to find Ezra Bridger because five plus years later he still hasn't returned from wherever the space whales took them. So Dave Filoni came out right after the Ahsoka Tano Mandalorian episode to clarify that this scene of them taking off to look for Ezra might actually happen after the events of the Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 5. At the time the explanation seemed like it was unnecessarily complicated, but number 6, the reason why I think Dave Filoni said that is because he was unofficially confirming that their mission, Ahsoka and Sabine's mission to find Ezra, will be covered during the Ahsoka series. They didn't say how many seasons it would run, but Ahsoka Tano is such a huge character and there's so much story for them to do, it could go for at least five to seven seasons if they wanted. I'm sure Rosario Dawson would be down for that too. The whole thing with live action Ezra Bridger is that if Grand Admiral Thrawn is confirmed to have returned from the Unknown Regions, that's why Ahsoka is looking for him right now, it also kind of confirms that Ezra Bridger made it back too, and it's up to Ahsoka and Sabine and whoever else they bring back from Rebels, like maybe Rex will come back because we have Tamura Morrison coming on as Boba Fett, he could also come back as the other clones, Rex is still alive in present day, and it'll be up to them to find out why Ezra hasn't tried to make contact with them since coming back, and the reason for that will probably wind up having something to do with Grand Admiral Thrawn's grand plans to conquer the galaxy and all the stuff happening with Moff Gideon because right now those two characters are kind of like the new versions of Darth Vader and the Emperor Palpatine of this new era of Disney Plus series. Moff Gideon being the Darth Vader of this equation and Thrawn being more like the calculating, more secretive Emperor figure pulling the strings from afar. I've talked about this in a couple of my other Mandalorian videos, but it feels like there have been so many Easter eggs this season for the Thrawn trilogy of books that the new live action Thrawn story might be Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau's version of a Thrawn trilogy for those of you that read the books. Really awesome story that's technically still Legends. Dave Filoni is the one that recanonized Thrawn through Star Wars Rebels, but he didn't recanonize everything from those stories, so I'm not expecting them to do a copy paste version of a Thrawn trilogy. But imagine a version of that Thrawn trilogy just done across all the new series that now connect with the Mandalorian. Here's where we get to the Hayden Christensen, Anakin Skywalker of it all though. It was confirmed that he's coming back to play Darth Vader and Anakin on the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. That series is set 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, which puts it about 15 years before the events of the Mandalorian in the Ahsoka series, because the Ahsoka series takes place at the same time as the Mandalorian series. Darth Vader normally walks around in his armor and sounds like James Earl Jones with that deep voice. No, I am your father. So the real reason, as a lot of you have probably guessed, for casting Hayden Christensen going through the trouble of that are one, to do burnt scarred Anakin with his mask off like we see during Rogue One in his regeneration chamber in the Bakta tanks. Two, to show him speaking as Anakin Skywalker under his mask when Obi-Wan probably winds up breaking it open with his lightsaber so you're seeing Anakin under the mask and he sounds like Anakin again. And three, it was also reported that there's going to be some sort of Anakin Skywalker flashbacks to stuff during Order 66 and before he was burnt, before he lost the high ground, post all the memes. So with Hayden Christensen coming back to do all this Anakin Skywalker Darth Vader stuff, a lot of you have also been asking if that means they'd also try to do some sort of live action Ahsoka Tano Anakin Skywalker scenes either using flashbacks or in present day with an older version of Ahsoka using Force Ghost Anakin so that you could have a scene with the two of them speaking to each other in live action. At this point anything is possible given what Dave Filoni has been doing the past couple of years. He's been trying to do as many of these animated characters in live action and have it all make sense in the timeline. And think about what he did with the final Clone Wars episodes. The whole point of the final Clone Wars season 7 episodes, the reason they overlap with Revenge of the Sith, is because he wanted to work Ahsoka and Rex the other major Clone Wars characters from animation into the official movie canon. So like why wasn't Ahsoka there helping Anakin? One of her greatest regrets, and I hope that they cover this during the Ahsoka series, is that she feels like if she had been there with Anakin during the events of Revenge of the Sith, she could have stopped him from turning to the dark side and saved him. 
You get a sense for some of that when she's talking to Mando about Grogu's history in Order 66, about how the Jedi Order is almost all gone now. But he just brought Ahsoka Tano into live action with Bo-Katan and Grand Admiral Thrawn, these other animated characters, so it makes sense that he would also want to work them into the movie canon as well, do that in live action. You guys can let me know in the comments though, would you rather see Force Ghost Anakin talking to older Ahsoka or would you rather see flashbacks with the two of them? Because Rosario Dawson still looks almost as young as she did 15 to 20 years ago, so it actually wouldn't be that hard to just make her look like a younger version of Ahsoka. But according to the Star Wars people and given all these Easter eggs, the big event crossover that the Ahsoka series, Rangers of the New Republic, and The Mandalorian are supposed to culminate in as they were talking about at the Disney investor meeting will be them defeating Grand Admiral Thrawn and maybe Moff Gideon. And when they said that the series will all culminate in a big crossover event, they did not say when that would happen. I think that just depends on how long these other spin-off series run. They've already confirmed that they're getting ready to ramp up to production on The Mandalorian Season 3 that'll be releasing episodes starting Christmas Day 2021 next year. They've already announced their release date, which is pretty crazy. The Ahsoka series and the New Republic series probably won't premiere till 2022. So what's probably going to happen is next year on The Mandalorian Season 3, we'll see Ahsoka Tano, Bo-Katan come back, maybe even Grand Admiral Thrawn, and we'll just pick up with them right before the events of their spinoff series begin. And going forward, you'll see all the characters from all these different interconnected series just bounce back and forth and cameo on each other's episodes. Rosario Dawson didn't confirm whether or not she's coming back to cameo in the Mandalorian Season 2 finale. She made it sound like she was, but that's not confirmed. My video for that will post this Friday just like normal, so make sure you have alerts turned on for my channel so you don't miss that. There's so many storylines that they have to wrap up. I'm not expecting everybody to come back for the finale, but everybody you've seen who survives the finale will wind up coming back at some point during season three. Could you even imagine everyone threatening to cancel their Disney Plus subscriptions if they tried to kill Grogu in the finale or hurt him in any way? If anyone's wearing plot armor in the finale, it'll be Grogu. Beskar forged plot armor. But this is the full spread of all those new Star Wars series that they announced that are coming in the next couple of years. I will be doing episode videos for all this stuff, so it's going to be crazy in the best possible way. Everyone click here for my breakdown of that new Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi teaser trailer footage from this past week, and click here for my full Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 7 video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, this is the way.